signals they need to pick up. So with this, I understand a couple of uh, terms I'll be talking about today. One is called unified matrix. What is unified matrix? It's an interesting phrase, but what does it mean? It means understanding cross-channel, cross-device behavior. To understand what are the signals you as a marketer need to pick up and understand to evaluate and demonstrate success. But the challenge is becoming more and more complex over the course of time. New channels are coming up, and consumers are moving from one channel to the other seamlessly. And unfortunately, the closed walled gardens of Facebook and Google do not allow you to track consumers as they go through because they have their own inherent problems of sharing data. So in that kind of a scenario, do you listen to Google or do you listen to Facebook and say, yeah, you guys believe I've done well, and I believe I've done well. Or do you look at a methodology that you create and you draw all those data points out of Google and Facebook so you can ensure that the right metric, the right KPI is being picked based on your terms, not on their terms. So let's look at the scenario of, of a conversion. Yeah. An attribution conversion is credit distributed across channels based on contribution of the channel. And the conversion can be an action as well. It can be a video view, it can be a download of an app, it can be a download of a recipe, it can be anything. A conversion doesn't only mean sales. And in this scenario, the football analogy goes a long way. A goal that is scored, any England football fans here? But it doesn't apply to you guys because there is no credit and there is no attribution, so there are no goals. But for everyone else, <laughs> in football, there are goals scored. Sorry, Henry. So what happens is, in this scenario, if the first pass goes wrong, which is the first interaction with the consumer goes wrong, he will never reach the destination you're trying to send it to. Yeah, it's a closed scenario. It's a series of passes of teams working together to get to that destination where you want to send the consumer to. And that's exactly the point of attribution. Understanding the role each player is playing or each channel is playing to get the consumer to the destination you want to drive it to. Yeah, and we use this analogy later on in my attribution piece. But we need to step back a bit and understand measurement more. So here is here's the typical way we were taught marketing. Yeah? The typical way we were taught marketing was there is an exposure. That was a reaction which no one could track because everything was TV and print and outdoor centric. You could not track the consumer reactions. And after that, a whole new world opened when digital came into play because you could track the immediate reaction of the consumer. And he would take an action like visit a page, download a recipe, watch a video, so on and so forth. And finally, if that experience was good, it would lead to satisfaction or dissatisfaction in some cases. And he would tell a friend or share it on the Facebook wall or so on and so forth. This is a linear way of doing media, but in traditional media, our understanding of consumer behavior stopped here. So we had no visibility on what was happening. On the next stage, but if you understand the roles that data liquidity has created seamlessly, we need to rewire our thinking in marketing. The role of media is not to sell products. The role of media is to trigger interest and build choice on the left hand side. If you have a screwed up experience after that first interaction, don't think about a retail experience going wrong. If you move the consumer to a bad creative, Content or an asset experience, and assets, your know, websites, your know, pages, your Facebook pages, YouTube channel, etc., there is a fracture. So there is a connection, but the connection cannot be over reliant on the first piece. Because the first piece is only triggering interest in your brand. Conversions, loyalty, is heavily dependent on the second phase of that interaction, which is unfortunately lots of times controlled by different agencies or different partners who are not working together. So let's take a look at redefining it. Okay, so let's look at roles and goals across the paid on the system as well. So I gave a broad stroke at what the role of media and creative is. But within media, there is paid on the system. Yeah, so you paid 
system is going to request uh, your own media, which is experiences you are creating, or think about retail experiences, is creating preference, and if there is a lot or a breakup that's happening on the third piece. But metrics need to differ from all channels. Why do they need to differ? Because the role of each of these channels is different. You can't have the same metric being evaluated across. There is no concept of a big to rate one media. There is no concept of, of anything else satisfaction driven on paid media. So you need to look at through the channel tracking to evaluate success of any campaign. We come to attribution now. I'm not deviating from the topic. I just want to set the raw set right. So let's look about look at how you track and evaluate different experiences in your paid media. I know Ash and the people will be covering this later on, but if you want to evaluate the quality of paid media, there is enough liquidity available in the tracking currently to look at what's working for you, be it on reach frequency, be it on actual viewability, on target delivery, fraud detection, so on and so forth. Because these metrics or these numbers are giving you the quality of media that you're buying and who you are targeting. And we touched on it earlier this morning. If you do not evaluate quality, you'll find why. Because you're believing a system or a publisher or a partner who's not giving you access to real data. So you need to use third parties to get this kind of understanding on a trigger interest piece. Yeah? Likewise, on efficiency. So it's always about a combination of efficiency and effectiveness in paid media. So forget, forget about CDN. Use your viewability metric, remove things which are not in view, and then calculate your viewable CDN. That's true efficiency. Look at people who are outside of your target set that you've reached through reporting. And say remove them and then tell me the effective CPM. Yeah? Or CPC or whatever, whatever metric you're tracking. So remove all the junk which is not coming through and start understanding this space more and more. The second piece is around two very critical pieces, specifically in the branding domain. And I'm not talking about e-commerce companies. But the length and depth of visit, which is so crucial to engagement. What is length and depth of visit? The time people spend and the pages people view. How much time are people spending on the assets I'm sending them to? What are they watching? What are their conversion paths? And are they following the tra trajectory I want them to follow? Or are they going in their own simple directions? That, that's how we evaluate and set up a metric system. The third piece is about loyalty which is around amplification rate. And amplification rate is any action the conversion takes based on the number of people you have been reaching. An action can be a share, it can be a tweet, it can be a like, a dislike, whatever. Any reaction to the post that you're giving based on the total reach, this that percentage is the amplification rate, or engagement rate, as they call it, paid terms on Facebook. Profile of engagers and followers, very, very crucial. Think about your YouTube channel and look at YouTube analytics. You'll be surprised that we were with a lot of FMCG giants in this part of the world. 13 to 25% of views that are coming through on their YouTube channel, and almost 50% of the followers these companies are getting are outside of the country they're covering. No one would release that view. So please probe your agencies to give you real data instead of telling you have one, one million fans. You don't need one million fans. You need a hundred thousand captured fans from Malaysia. There is a Indian political party called BJP, and I'm sure the Indians will know this, but Narendra Modi, who's our PM, has this massive following on, um, on Twitter. And every topic, everywhere he travels, there's a trending topic saying, okay, Narendra Modi is in the US, Narendra Modi is in the XYZ places. When someone analyzed that data, of people who retweet from the political party account any post and the followers of Narendra Modi. They saw 30 to 25 percent of people come from Ayutthaya in Thailand. <laughs> Ayutthaya used to be part of the ground and domain, but there are no Indians who follow Narendra Modi there. Yeah. Likewise, there's, there was another city in, in Thailand which was like Beyond, which was falling. So clearly, there is, there is enough fraud out there. There is enough gaming happening 
which you and I need to protect ourselves from. And certainly for parents, it's far more sensitive to look at numbers than to look at analytics. Analytics can be the truth. Numbers reveal false ambitions of success. So I will urge you all at some point in time over the weekend. I know it's one of the most exciting things to do. But this is an exercise we do quite a lot in the mindshare ecosystem. Say, you think like a user, don't think like a marketer. Think like a user and do this test. Put all the channels that you have available and the agencies speak to you about on one quadrant, yeah, on the right hand side. It can be banners, it can be banners on the mobile, whatever, whatever you heard of, Instagram ads. On the left hand side, put your communication goals and do a red light test. I'll show you a red light test. And put it as channels which you believe are best for reach, best for engagement, so on and so forth. Do this test as a user, not as a marketer. Think about yourself as a user and do this test. Put all the channels you've heard of and all the agencies and everyone talks to you about and especially Google and Facebook. You can take on and look at everything in the mix. Put them on the right hand side quadrant, put your marketing goals on the left hand side quadrant. Do a color mapping based on your category. The colors can change category by category. This is just my understanding for my plan. So you've done one piece of the paid media analysis and understood this case on how to measure what to do. Let's move on. Do the same thing on the assets that you're creating. You can have a Spotify channel, you can have a YouTube channel, you can have a website, you can have a Facebook page. All the things you do. I know there's a massive world mentality uh, going to Southeast Asia of creating Facebook pages. Facebook pages and YouTube channels are its renting space. You're following the template that is defined by another company. It's not your own. Do not play in the romantic space. You guys have seen the loss of all your posts going away. The moment they change their word, they spoke about that earlier today. You're playing with the hands of a media owner where you don't own that asset. Remember to own your own assets first before getting into social media and creating Facebook fan, fan pages. They will not give you any love from your consumers. 90% of Facebook fan pages which are liked are never revisited. It's a global number. Yeah, so don't get played around with it. And do the same thing here. Do the same thing here. If I'm trying to achieve X, Y, Z, where would I send the consumer to? Will I send it to my own website? Or should I ask them to download an app? Based on the, on the category requirements, based on the marketing goals, do this red light test. It helps you in understanding much more about how your consumers behave. But I would urge you all to think like a user, not like a marketer. You will tend to think about colors in your mind. So this is a, I know, I know for the people in the gallery, this is specifically to you because I know you can't see a damn. This is a metrics framework which we have created for one of our largest SMCG plants. And I'll tell you what it does. It's a framework it's a that all agencies have adopted. On this slide here, at the bottom, are different channels. Search engines, display and video, social media monitoring, site and site page analytics. Yeah. On the left hand side, on the quadrant, are this, up there is a funnel, I guess you can the word advocacy. And based on the color of the channel, they are what you need to track on any campaign basis through at least the basic stripe. For example, if you ever is a search engine and you want to look at how do you track awareness shift on a search engine, what is the metric that you need to check on Google or Yahoo or Bing? Everyone knows what Bing is, I hope. A few knocks. I expect it to drop less. But anyway, if the search engine is Microsoft runs, like everything else, it's unknown. Google Microsoft <laughs> But anyhow, so you keep <laughs> You track percentage of impressions in first position. Yeah, it's a metric that you're tracking. If you need to track awareness, the awareness will always be higher if you're in a certain first in a certain position in the global world. What is the second thing you track? Number of keywords ranked by quality score. If your quality score is low in Google, your ads will never appear. If your ads don't appear, there is no awareness. Yeah. So it's different metrics, and I can share this document with you. 
as you go through the journey, like a consumer, you start looking at the right data points to pick based on the channels you're using. Yeah, this is one conclusion slide, but on each channel there are more details. Because the consumer is going through a journey, and the roles of the channels are different, you will have to create metrics which take you as success metrics through the journey. You cannot rely on the front end and say, click through rate is brilliant, I think the campaign is a success. Because the 4% click through rate and the 90% bounce rate is a disaster. Yeah? You need to look at through the channel going forward. So that brings me to the more interesting way, or the more boring way, which is called attribution. I spoke about attribution. Let's look at the definition of attribution going forward. Attribution is, is a method of distributing credit across some of the benchmarks. We spoke about this, it's a fairly straightforward definition, but it's a far more complex process. Anyone who's tracking actions, transactions, or any kind of uh, download or app download or PDF download, recipe download, leads or banking cards, this becomes more and more pivotal in terms of your media choices, your asset choices, what's working, what's not working. Should I give attribution and lots of credit of success to the last game, which is, I think, a fairly archaic way of looking at success? Let's look at some what attribution is and what these models talk about. First thing, remember your consumers don't surf, they ski. Anyone understands this analogy? Anyone who skis? Okay, actually, neither do I. Because <laughs> I don't ski. But I think it means that you navigate through your own paths instead of someone driving it for you. Neither do I surf. So clearly I'm an expert of this <laughs> Okay, um, we move forward and I'll explain this analogy how it comes to life. This is a very old slide. It was created by a company called Microsoft Atlas, when it was called Microsoft Atlas. But the reality has not changed since this day. I think it's a six-year-old slide, but I genuinely love it. Because it talks about different touch points and different consumers, and can be so called different segments, following different paths. So how can you give entire credit to a certain segment and assume that 15 to 34, everyone will the same? 15 to 34 is half the world. It's not the target audience. You need to break it up. You need to break it up into segments and behaviors to understand how different segments are traversing through each of these channels. Yeah? So this is just a conversion happening at some point in time. And these are, uh, these are companies that existed for MSN at that point in time. Uh, I think it's still around. Uh, in Microsoft, people are sorry. <laughs> but, so people, people get exposed to different channels, they react in different ways, and the conversion might be four steps, five steps, seven steps, so on and so forth. So if you give all your credit up here, the infrared is the only thing working on this one. Thank you, Raj. So if you give all your credit to these guys, then you're doing something called measurement myopia. Measurement myopia means not understanding the reason why it's happening, but giving credit to the last person who comes to your store and buys a product. If any of these interactions would have not happened, that journey would have been broken. The last bit of conversion, typically it goes to search, would have not happened. 78% of searches on Google happen because people get exposed to other media. You don't wake up and discover a campaign is happening. Yeah. Unless Google tells you. And mind you, believe it. I used to believe it at some point some in time that whatever Google says is gospel truth. But 70% of Google searches are happening because you're advertising offline or online or in some other channel. It's an cause and effect approach. And they would say, all your campaigns are really working well. Our ROI on Google search is the best. What if I stop all my display campaigns and your video campaigns and TV? Will ROI still the same? Any guesses? Okay. So the guy who created Google Analytics was a gentleman called Abhinash Kaushik. Have you heard of Abhinash Kaushik? Okay. Abhinash Kaushik is one of the best blogs on analytics globally. 
Tamamlaş var şeklinde sizin bakın sabitli bu. Yani bir kere de eksperiment. Ben yine çok bakın kabul ediyorum. Ve bir switch all other channels. To do that, we take the test of paying search. On our way. For one of the biggest travel companies in the world. The YouTube, there is a YouTube video for you for that. So, I got started to join this world in what he did. He switched off for two weeks. All advertising. We check. How Google pay the search works on our way. It happened. 78% drop in sales. 78% drop in sales. Then he did another experiment. He said, I will stop paying search, let all other channels run. All other channels were running. He said, I will pause Google search. And it works. As I said, this was before the Google time. He was using it now. But he was the one that started. And uh, when he did that, there was 80% drop in sales. So that clearly is evidence that your, all your media in conjunction, which is working fine, to fake search or diet should reduce. Okay. And one other question I would urge you to ask, and this is a slight digression. Please check with Google how to do better SEO. Have you checked how Google to do better SEO? They are, of course, the largest search engine. Work. Anyone check the program on how to do better SEO? So I've been working 60 years in this space and uh, I started working on Google before Google entered Asia. You know, many campaigns were already in mind. And I, I've been asking them this question saying, forget about it. I have no money. I'm a small player. I have no budgets. How do I, how do, I do better SEO? I have asked country managers. I have asked regional heads. Saying, you own that algorithm. Please advise me as a brand, what is the market here, how do I do better SEO? Guess the answer what I get. You don't know. If you don't know your own platform based on which you've created your entire paid stack, how will we know your platform? Please don't get blinded by this approach of invest money behind it and your brand will work on Google. Please don't get blinded behind it. There is a much easier way to do organic search and avoid the pitfalls of paying money to get the same clip. At least on your brand terms, stop advertising. Singapore Airlines is the last of the point. Singapore Airlines buys not a single brand term on Google search. I think it's a pretty challenging thing to do. So you don't buy AirAsia, for example, if you're AirAsia, you don't buy Malaysia Airlines, buy Malaysia Airlines. 70 to 80 percent of conversions are coming from our brand terms. Brand terms is something you own. Why do you need to brand it by your own brand term? You have to be number one by default, which is the basics, right? Please challenge Google next time you are here. If Tajit is not here, but I would have asked him. Please tell me how to do better SEO. Please tell me how to do better SEO. Yeah, I'm a big admirer of Google. Don't say There's no Google version session yet. That will happen in the evening, both at the bar. Okay, so this is, uh, I spoke about this, it's just the, the typical misconception of overlands on the last click as the consumer goes through the journey. So that, that's why attribution was created, and there are different attribution models that companies follow. I know we have their own, Google has their own, uh, we have our own. But I just walk you through two different scenarios in attribution. On the left hand side is the first touch attribution model. A first touch attribution model which is the, the purple bar up front, gives highest credit in that conversion to the first interaction that happens. So if you're making $100 on this conversion, it says the first day you should get $50 or 50% credit for that conversion. Yep, first touch model. Second touch model gives you the last touch, which is the Google model, last day. Then there is last and event model. Last ad event means the last time the consumer saw the ad. That channel should get maximum credit for it. These are very one dimensional single touch models. But over time, as data becomes more and more liquid and more and more accessible, it's evolving on the right hand side, which is multi touch. What does multi touch do? It gives you position based rank. That means if 100% credit needs to be given to a channel, and the channel can be Facebook, the channel can be a creative, the channel can be anything. 
and please look out for Microsoft or whatever else that exists. In the position based model, the first and the last interaction get the highest credit. If you have 100% of the spend on credit, you would say, okay, 30% here and 30% there, and the middle three interactions are split between 10 to 11%, which is not very scientific. The second thing, and then you can look on the right hand side and read about the reasons why it's not scientific. Another model that came about was uh, from a company called Market Motive. Market Motive does some sensational analysis, and they did the time decay model. Time decay model focuses if the interaction or the conversion or the action takes 15 to 20 days, the recency of the interaction is where you give highest credit. So if someone's uh, talking to you through Facebook in the last two days, gets the highest credit, and if someone searched for you um, like 30 days back, they don't get any credit or minimal credit. And the Linear model is you give equal credit to each person on each channel. That is interacted before a certain action happened. Then the interesting way is a custom model. A custom model looks at role and importance of each channel and gives a weightage. Think about it. You say, for example, you say uh, Apple MacBook. Yeah? In the Apple MacBook, you need to read the different features that are there in the new laptop. To reveal those features, you need to tell a story of a one minute video that consumers need to see. And that video is sitting on YouTube. YouTube is one of the interactions that happen. So someone sees your ad on Yahoo, on the tech channel, there's a banner that, that is seen. The consumer clicks on it, goes away, doesn't do anything. Then he reaches you on YouTube, and he watches that entire one minute video. Then he goes to search, and looks for the latest score at the words. What this model does is it knows the deepest interaction in terms of converting you from a prospect, uh, from a suspect to a prospect, would have been the YouTube video. Because if you've seen the entire one minute video, it has played a significant role in conversion. It gives your weighted basis that. Everyone knows this so far. Yeah? People are sleeping. Can I get you some beer or something? Jordan, can you get a short for Jordan? How much time do I have? Okay. Just play. I see. Okay, everyone interested in this, right? This is like the most thing you've seen all day. <laughs> okay. Anyhow, so we can make it a product now. It, uh, it's, it's called the uh, Mindshare Retina. Retina is just the name of our product. The science based on the value of the channel and time spent, the attribute of certain number. We've done a lot of work with the uh, client simulation, um, regional clients, the variety clients, and of course, lots of telecoms in, um, in Singapore as well. And this is what it does uh, something I spoke about. It allows you to give a flexibility to the channel and the creator that plays a significant role. And it, it helps you do scenario planning much better. And uh, this is a big technical topic, so I'll just touch the surface on this one and then conclude. Because I don't touch it as a great time up there for all the time it's not in the very first I can see. Uh, on broad spectrum, this is what it does. It tells you the channel overlap that your consumers have. Channel overlap is a very, very crucial thing for you to understand the reasons why consumers are moving from one channel to the other and it helps you plan your budgets much, much better. Because if you have one channel which is far more expensive, but if you can get the same person on another channel which is less expensive, you can man manage your budget to get a cheaper cost of conversion. It looks at optimum frequency based on basic conversion patterns. Across publishers. Across publishers gives you a number, say if you're in Yahoo, optimum frequency should be seven, if you're Microsoft, your frequency should be three, so on and so forth. Yeah. And this is based on at least not terabytes of data, but a few terabytes of data that get collected. I hope you have a device idea. Third thing, it looks at top conversion paths. So in real time, you can change your journeys and 
drive people to the right landing pages and the right channels in, based on the data that's coming through. So based on the conversion box, you can adapt your media and your content mix and the creative mix. And it does uh, something called cost analysis. This is just outcomes which come up after the, after the study is done, which takes two to three weeks. So it looks at the clustering of consumer online behavior, and then based on that, you can create content and consumer journeys. And from a more deeper angle, this is what it does. It looks at uh, sales by KPI by publisher. So if you want to evaluate 15 publishers which are in your plan, or if you want to evaluate Google, good luck to you. Won't be very clear, but if you're you playing neutral and sensible, if you're outside Google, you can evaluate each publisher and the role they're playing against the KPIs you set. It looks at investment optimi optimization by depart, uh, by channel, and so on and so forth, and it helps you it going to very much validation. Of course, uh, looking at different channel uh, ranges across uh, the channel. I can't share case studies with most of the case studies here. You know, are not very sensitive uh, clients, but as I said, any client who's looking at any kind of action-based advertising, attribution should be our first order of call to understand what's happening behind the scenes after the trip. What's working on media, what's happening on the website, what, what is that combination that's working. So I would urge you all to look at attribution fairly seriously once you figure out your metrics, same works. Anyone needs a copy of the, the matrix that matters, some sheet I was showing you about this fairly detailed document. I'll uh, definitely share it with all my clients. Sorry. <laughs> I'll share it with all my clients as well. <laughs> so, I know you guys have a lot of questions because it's been such a stirring session, this one. <laughs> but any questions, please uh, throw it up. I was not long to address them. Yes, sir. <laughs> Attribution is a service we provide through this product. Attribution is a method of evaluating uh, ROI across channels. We created our own algorithm to look at the role that each channel plays instead of looking at very standardized algorithms around last click or distributed credit. So, so it's, a, it's a service we provide, you have to pay for every study that you do. I think what I can show you is how for the last eight days, uh, I would like to believe that we are making some sort of attribution, ROI calculation plan, and the session will be right into the same thing we ask our questions, how we do the signal, how we do the email, whatever. Sure. But there should be something that we know like that. No, no, no. Right now, I'm giving you a I'm sorry, I'm going to address it. Uh, there is no attribution study being done because most of the conversion metrics are not defined. So what we are looking at right now, working with your teams in the regions, is to understand the front end of the funnel. So what are the metrics which will define success for us across OEX and, and other brands? Post that, uh, we started the attribution discussion. Attribution, as I said, we need to get lots of dust in the room before we get to that data. That is, uh, we'll be working on that. Any more questions, folks? Any, Any questions from my chair, guys? Have you seen this presentation for three times? Can I ask you a question? No, but I think you're, I think you're not. I think you're off the road. Thank you. Thank you.